Mark, another new product from uh, Mazak. I'm here at the European headquarters in Worcester. I saw it briefly at Emo. Great to see it here in the UK, the VCN 700. Why have you introduced it? Well, we're very excited about this new range of machines. So the VCN 700 that you see in front of us is the first in a new lineup of vertical machining centers that really give performance to our customers. Okay, so what's different about it? What are the, what are the points that, that we should be talking about in this video that will make it attractive to machine shops? Well, first of all, the 700 is characterized by its very generous size. So 700 millimeters in the Y axis, 1.3 meters in the X axis, and 650 millimeters in Z, and a very large table with 1.5 meters. But there are other features as well that we've researched the market to target this really for a very dynamic performance for milling. Have you, as you normally do then, you know, you always say uh, that Mazak is, is different, and, and a lot of that difference comes from what you guys say about your research in your marketplace, yeah. asking your customers what they need in a machine tool. Is that where this has come from as well? Yes, that's right. But not only with, uh, with our customers, we're also getting very close to, for example, the CAD CAM suppliers that work with our customers and also the tooling people as well to understand really what's required to elevate the performance of this, of this machine. Right, now dynamic milling, now this is a strategy, isn't it? This is the way machining is going. Explain what that strategy is and how this machine copes with it perfectly. Well, dynamic milling really has, has come about with the advent of, of CAD CAM and then the high efficiency trochoidal strategies that they're offer really, which engage a constant load on the tool. And it's that constant load really that makes such a fit, efficient milling. But what that's really done is brought about a difference in the way machines are being programmed, the type of data that's being fed into the program, and also the cutting tools that are used in that, in that application. So what we've done is we've, we've adapted our specification to match perfectly with the market requirements. Right, now that, there's two areas there. There's the machines build and then there's the, then there's the control system. Quite a large envelope for a C-frame machine. Is that a good thing? Yes, that's um, it's very beneficial. We've had a look at the type of customers that are going to be looking at this machine to understand their size of workpiece. So this caters for anybody requiring a large y-axis, uh, anybody that's also doing mold work, this is ideal. Uh, also the specification of the machine as well is ideally suited to that as well. So that construction of a, sheet, a C frame, the column is also in an A, an a style frame as well, yeah. isn't it? Is it? Does that mean that you've got more weight at the bottom of the machine? So, you know, movement and, uh, you know, the solidness, if that's the right word, is, is really inherent in the construction. That's right, Paul. With, with the advent of dynamic milling, the machine needs to move very agile and it needs to change direction, obviously, with the trochoidal strategies. So what you see is a fully cast product. It's designed on a C-frame, but the column itself is an A-frame and that's able to spread the load. It means when we move the machine in, in different directions, then we've got a very stable platform to conduct that machining. And when you're moving so quickly as you talk about with the strategy, I, would, I, I begin to think there's going to be a lot of stresses and strains on things like the ball screws, the axes movement. How do you maintain precision and, and, and reduce wear in those areas? Yeah, well, there's a number of key points there that you mentioned. First of all, we use uh, precision ground ball screws that are pre-tensioned and we align perfectly the servo motor in line with the ball screw. So it's, it's directly coupled, which gives it a very agile response. But also, not only with the ball screws, we use ro uh, rolling linear guides as well to give the optimum stiffness for agile performance. Now, you have mentioned to me before, and I find this fascinating, that linear scales on machines are, are, are important, but if the machine's built right in the first place, you can take a lot of the inaccuracies out in the, in the hardware itself, can't yeah. you? That's true. I mean, we, we, we take great care in our process to assemble the machines. So we pre-tension our ball screws, they're uh, assembled with precision and what we're able to do then is build a, build a machine with a very inherent accuracies that gives longe longevity for the customer. Um, your control then, to be able to cope with the, again, once again, the demands of this new or this machining strategy, you need a lot of look ahead, you need a lot of processing speed, you have all that within your control, do you? Yes, this is the smooth G control on this, on this machine. Um, it's a Windows embedded control with Windows 10. It includes 60 gigabytes of data, so you've got adequate capacity for those high capacity programs that are often passed to us for um, you know, requirements for trochoidal strategies, um, you know, dye mold work, etc. But also the speed of the control. The control is able to accept data in at 540 meters, 
which means that even on micro-segment um, um, programs that are passed to the machine, the machine's able to move in a very agile response to ensure that it keeps up with, with the desired performance. And is that another area where you believe that Mazak is different? I mean, you've mentioned to me in the past about there's no starvation. And yeah. that, that's important, isn't it? You know, if you've got a machine that's really moving quickly, you've got to be able to feed it with the code. That's right. You, you see a lot of the, um, the strategies that are being used now, where they use high feed rate, full depth of cut, small step over amount, but what they're doing is engaging full load. But those feed rates have advanced. So for the customer to be able to take advantage of that feed rate, you need a control that will really deliver it. And that's really what the Smooth G does. Whatever feed rate is thrown at the control, the machine is able to cope with that and deliver the real feeds and speeds for the customer. All right, so we know about the build of the machine and, and why you've done it and the control system. So, so who's it for then, Mark? Who, who's a target audience for you here in the UK and potentially around the world? Yeah. Well, those customers really, that, I mean, our, our customer base is so varied, but those customers really that desire the extra performance for milling, but also in terms of capacity as well. And that could be from anybody manufacturing large frame components or um, once in a multi setup, but also for those customers that are manufacturing freeform surfaces, such as within die and mold. I want to talk finally about this tool in, in the carousel here. What does that do? Why is it in there? Okay, this is a brand new development. This is called the Ultra Spindle. It's an electrostatic spindle that provides both 60,000 and optionally 80,000 RPM. So it's really targeted for customers requiring super finishing operations. We've got an example of a component that would take eight hours to normally produce by a 12,000 RPM spindle. Using the Ultra Spindle, we can do that in just two and a half hours. So that's a significant saving. And with that, also the added quality of the surface that comes about from the high speed operation. What we're able to do with the high with the ultra spindle pull is we're able to load this through the tool changes so you can have more than one tool. And the beauty of it is the machine itself has 15,000 RPM as standard, as an 18,000 RPM optional spindle. So you've got that rigidity, assurance of that build, but when you require the additional speed, we can tool change this ultra spindle into the, into the machine to give that added bonus of, of speed and efficiency in the cycle. So is it locked in the spindle? So there's no, no wear added wear on the spindle no, on the spindle itself? Correct. So the, there's a stopper block on the side, so the electrical and pneumatic services are passed through that. It's electrostatic spindle, it uses ceramic bearings, it's brushless technology, so there's virtually no thermal effect on the machine, even at the high speed of 60,000 and 80,000 RPM. With everybody talking about CO2 emissions, is this a green machine, Mark, and what do you do in order to, to make it as green as possible? Well, there's a number of things we've done. We've looked at the design of the machine, things that we've been um, on a journey for a while now in terms of like techno technology, but key elements that we've been looking at is, is the, is the um, um, advance with the hydraulic systems to reduce the power consumption, but also to be able to monitor what is the actual output. So use it, using the energy dashboard, we can monitor correctly the energy required per component, but also importantly, the CO2, which is very important for where we're, see, where we're seeing the world going at the moment. And what does that mean for a customer? What it means for a customer is that they're going to be asked by, the, by, by their, their customers to, to not only give a, a price for the part, but they're going to be asked, what is the CO2 impact? So they'll be able to closely monitor their machines and they'll be able to record exactly what their CO output is so they, they can monitor their carbon footprint and give that to their, their customers as well. And all of these things that we talk about, the precision, the speed, the control, the build, what does that mean for a user of one of these machines in what they make? That you get a true dynamic response. So if we look at what's taken place with dynamic milling, um, the type of tooling is generally changed. So people are using more and more solid carbide that has required more speed on the machine. So we've advanced our standard, standard spindle speed to 15,000 RPM. As I mentioned, we have a, an 18,000 RPM spindle as well. But with the control, with the, with the ability to feed data in and process large quantities of data, and also the dynamic response in the machine, the stability and the accuracy, we've got a package that really does deliver on all fronts for the customer.